Hey, all my YouTube friends. I'm here in the busted knuckle doing an oil change on my Jeep. And I thought I would just take this time to show you guys a little bit of my preparations for the Polar Bear Challenge. My preparations are rather simple. There isn't really much to it. But before I do that, I want to get started with the Solar Bear Challenge. Every year, um, a bunch of the Solar Bears do promote our Polar Bear Challenge site, so I would like to return the favor to and let everybody know that if for some reason you're not able to participate in the Polar Bear Challenge or you want even more to do during this season between December and maybe the middle of February or whenever, check in with the Solar Bear Challenge. And just below in the description, I will give you the link to the site and the link to the person hosting the site. Gunner is going to be hosting it this year. And so if you're interested in that and for some reason uh, prefer the Solar Bear Challenge, by all means go and participate in that. I was told by that it's going to be uh, a little bit more difficult this year or some uh, extra things are going to be kind of thrown in a little different than the Solar Bear Challenge has been in the past. So I would urge you, even if you haven't done it in the past, to check that out and follow the links down below. Also for my YouTube friends uh, that are having problems with comments on YouTube videos, which I am presently myself. Some of my older videos, when I log on, there's nothing but blank white where the comments used to be. And then on those videos of mine that show comments, I'm not able to reply to anybody. Well, thank you to Denise, 13 Here Comes the Sun. She found me a workaround that doesn't work every time for all of them, but for the present, it's working for me. And what you do is just click in the little boxes if you're going to comment on your own video rather than reply to comments. And then use either the plus or the at sign and start typing the name of the person you want to reply to. And if they're linked to a Google Plus channel so far, the list will come up and you can choose their name and have a reply and it will also send an email to them and everything will be taken care of. I have no idea why in the world Google did not send out an email or YouTube did not let us know about this because if somebody hadn't shown me I would have would not have known. I also can't guarantee for you by the time you even watch this video that it will still work that way but for present on a lot of my videos not all of them it is working for me so you can try that method if at all possible. I'll also put a link down below to uh, Denise's channel, 13 Here Comes the Sun, if you're not subbed to her. And if you have any questions, I think she knows a little bit more of it than I do even. So I would say rather than leaving a question in the comment for me, because I'm just starting to figure it out, um, probably go and see if she can send her a PM on her channel and see if she can help you out. So that is about that. And next, let me show you about my preparation. There's only two basic things I do. I set up a timer. There's my timer right there, and that timer is hooked into a heat lamp. I either run one or two. I'm going to try one for a while this year and see if I don't really have to have two. And the heat lamp comes on about an hour or two before I decide to ride, which would be maybe 6, 7 o'clock in the morning. I'll decide what my schedule is and how the temperatures are running. It comes on. Well, I'll just turn it on here to show you. It comes on for about an hour or two before. heats up the engine. Uh, be careful about this too because even though it's about maybe six to eight inches away it does get rather warm so don't point it to any of the um, rubber areas like I have a hose back here I've got a, a rubber coated so keep it pointed down below there keep it just heating up nothing but metal parts and I think that makes it with the oil being um, a little bit more thin with the with the heat it keeps the oil from getting so thick um, some people also might think well pointed at the battery too but my battery's inside the seat and uh, I don't think I really gained that much from it. Obviously, every little bit could help, but this is enough really to get me um, enough heat to start it fairly easily, and it's never been a problem in the, all the years I've been. I've been using this system for a long time, and it's always worked. And the other thing I do, I don't use any heated gear myself. Now, I'm not saying that anybody is uh, you know, a wimp or a crybaby or something like that because they do have to use uh, heated gear. You know, maybe they, their little tush might get, you know, too cold so they might put some kind of heating in there or they might put heat in their handlebars or they might put a windshield in front of their bike to uh, you know cut down on the cold but the only thing I do myself is just these regular handlebar mitts handlebar muffs uh, some people call them handlebar gaiters if you can't find them by looking up motorcycle accessories I've also found that you can look up snowmobile accessories so people also add these to handlebars on snowmobiles uh, my particular ones I couldn't tell you the model number because I got them from somebody else uh, these used to belong to Lori Jennifer but they're called parts unlimited and that's all the information I can give you but they're not hard to find and they're not expensive either you could probably find a good pair even for 20 bucks or less if you really looked around and uh, these just have a, a synthetic wool lining which is plenty good enough and uh, 
what I'm going to try to switch to this year and see if it works. I used to in the past use these gauntlet mittens because I think mittens are always better, things being equal. Um, but because I have the handlebar mitts already installed, I'm going to try these because the other day it was a 40 degree day and I rode around with these. These are dry rider gloves, and I, w I got these from uh, Lonnie Brightex. My buddy from Texas sent these to me, and they actually work pretty good for in the 40s, so I'm thinking with the addition of the handlebar mitts to block the wind, uh, I might be able to use these all the way down in the 20s, maybe the teens, uh, who knows. I'm just going to try it out and give you guys uh, an idea of how they work. They, they, they're marked here that they have thin solate, so they also have some additional insulation, and uh, they don't seem any heavier, they're not heavy, they're not bulky, they're not um, difficult to move around in, at least, you know, uh, maybe compared to just, you know, thin leather gloves, like this is what I use during the summer riding season that don't even have a lining, so um, they're probably a little bit more restrictive than that just because of all the armor they have, but um, not enough that it bothers me or causes me to have any trouble controlling the motorcycle, so. Anyway, that's just what I wanted to let you guys know. My preparations for the Polar Bear Challenge are rather simple, and uh, so far I haven't needed anything in addition, and they do work. Um, I also don't ride on days to where there's any kind of ice on the road. I don't ride any kind of days where there's packed snow or even any kind of snow on the road. Uh, I don't care if there's three-foot piles on either side of the road, as long as the pavement is basically uh, dry. I don't want to take a chance of skidding or anything like that, and I would uh, encourage everybody else, if you do not feel safe uh, in any kind of conditions, don't uh, even try to make a ride. It's not worth getting hurt for. So, uh, Main thing is be safe and have fun during the Polar Bear Challenge. So that's about it. Take care, everybody. Talk to you later. Okay, before I go, I wanted to include my latest stickers I got here. These are the latest ones that arrived since the last time I showed my stickers. Here we go. The man from Yorkshire. And he was even nice enough to send me two extras for trade. Uh, I also have uh, an envelope here for Gentleman's Nine, so I'm sure his sticker or stickers is in here too, so when he stops by, um, I'm sure it's one of these in there, just to save on postage, because this is coming from England, so um, sticker from Peachy's Place, my bro from Gibraltar, and Gentleman's Nine, this one was hand-delivered, he actually brought it by, so um, he'll probably be coming by to visit, or if not, we'll work out something where we we're close enough together that I can get these to him. So, yeah, this is my latest stickers decals.